Some of you might already know this, but I wasn't really an artist at all before I started this channel, and in fact actively disliked drawing for a lot of my childhood. Despite that, for YouTube, I knew I would not only need to draw several cats to reference in videos, but little graphics to represent topics I was covering, as well as over 50 poses for Sunnyfall herself. Then, four months into starting my channel, I also made the Trip Through Time series, which involved a full-blown illustration each time I discussed a book. Suffice to say, even though I did not have much experience with art, I knew this job choice would involve a lot of it, and the over three years of drawing for this channel and getting tips from my more involved artist friends have taught me a lot. My style and preferences have changed, the way I compose scenes, construct designs, and even the way I functionally color using my drawing program have radically altered by now thanks to making a small improvement every time I pick up a tablet pen. Which, to be clear, is almost exclusively for drawings you have seen on this channel. I still don't have a lot of time for or interest in art outside of this work. But to prove that, really, anyone can make improvement in this and at any speed they need to, I thought it would be a fun exercise to redraw three of my first headshots, along with my first Trip Through Time illustration today. Starting off, we have the oldest of the bunch, Stone Teller, who was drawn for the Tribe Problem video, the second ever on the channel, and far before I had decided how exactly I wanted the headshots to look at all. Because of that, you'll see me here sizing him up against Hazeltail, the first cat I drew in the cell shading style I adopted, and the cat I now use as a base to make sure the headshots all end up the same size and place on the canvas, to make their use in videos easier. In addition to the sizing, I would now draw cats' eyes much larger than this, push their noses further down their face to be closer to the mouths, and never, ever let the filled-in color include a break between the head, fur, and chest that isn't actually part of their body. How did I miss that? I'll also be changing up Stone Teller's design along the way because I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like how each of the accent colors are only used once. I don't like how they vary wildly, not just in brightness, but in saturation. I don't like how dark the nose is when the muzzle below it is such a light color. And I really don't like how none of the markings help to frame Stone Teller's face or tell you who he is as a character. I've gotten slightly better about design since then, so <laughs> let's hope I can put a nicer spin on this one. While I'm working on that, though, I wanted to do a little bit of discussion about the channel at large, mostly just to take stock of all that's happened. This channel has been a part of my life for almost three and a half years, and in that time I've amassed 113 videos and completed a full seven-book rewrite series of my dreams in Paws of Stars. I also technically have merch now, though it is not all that serious. If there's anything specific you'd ever want to see on there, let me know and I can see if it's possible, considering that type of request is the only reason the shop exists in the first place. With the channel itself, though, I have made some videos I'm really proud of. Gender and Warriors, The Pause of Stars video, and Sunnyfall's Life would definitely rank among my top picks, and uh, oh, wait, have I said this before? I feel like I told someone recently. Oh! <laughs> uh, yeah, she had asked for that. I should probably explain the story behind that one. But first, let's return to the drawings. This time, we have Dappled Pelt. She and the next cat, Rippleclaw, were each drawn for the sixth Sunny Spiels episode, say that five times fast, on River Clan, and were drawn at a time where I had decided the size of the canvas and position I wanted, but little else. Dappled Pelt's head is far too large on this version to show any of her body, and Rippleclaw, as you will see, has very protruding shoulders, more than any cat should have. <laughs> I also had a strange belief at the time that using any of the tools built into the drawing program for easier work would be cheating, so even where it would be a benefit towards my specific aims, such as when oval tools could help me form the iris, or copy-pasting one side of the sketch to the other could keep my cat symmetrical from the front, I opted not to use those techniques. I do actually like Dappled Pelt's design the most out of the ones I'm redrawing today, because I seem to just always be a sucker for tortoise shells, but even for her, there are things about the shape of the face I wish I could change. The nose tone is just pink instead of being based in the skin and pelt color of the cat as I would do now, and many of the drawing conventions in regards to facial proportions I mentioned with Stone Teller are still very much present. So, in we go. While I'm redrawing her, I think you all deserve an explanation regarding what the heck happened last Monday. Well, don't worry. There's no evil doppelganger. She's not taking over me or my channel. Actually, she's not evil at all. Just a bit, well, odd. This all started because, a long while back, I was discussing with some people in my Discord server where my name Sunnyfall comes from. I don't know what the two legs would say, but clearly, for me, the suffix fall comes from our word for the season, leaf fall. 
This, of course, means that there are three other Sunnies, Sunny Green for Greenleaf, who it made sense to put in Sky Clan because of their focus on trees, Sunny New for New Leaf and Thunder Clan because of their denser undergrowth and penchant for progress, and Sunny Bear for Leaf Bear and Wind Clan because of their lack of trees. Those three were eventually made into Cloudy Summer, Windy Spring, and Snowy Winter instead to coincide with the cats I made up for Patreon, so you can just imagine these three living out their lives in those clans. Of course, that left us with Shadowclin being empty, so a fifth cat, Sunny Void, was invented to fill that, well, void. She's an odd entity, something of a living eclipse in the form of a cat, and she can put up a glamour to look more normal when she feels like it. Which really isn't all that useful unless she needs to look like one of the Sunnies, considering she can't change her overall shape. Though I have heard that if you try to pet her, your hand will just disappear into the darkness, like a black hole or something. Uh, she's fine, though. <laughs> Just our funny little weirdo over in ShadowClan. And because she can look like me, I asked her if she would make a video for the channel on April Fool's Day. And, uh, well, I think she might have spent an hour, uh, researching what a YouTuber is and came away with what is perhaps an incorrect idea of what I do here. It does explain why she kept asking for all of those different top 10 lists, though. Anyway, back to the drawings. It was probably obvious in the dappled pelt drawing as well, but one of the most immediately obvious differences between my old and current styles is the shading. I opted for soft airbrush shading in this period and didn't have the knowledge or patience of how to even select certain areas to put the airbrush in, which led to the shading being messy, obscuring whatever colors I wanted the base to be, and actually making the shading less noticeable. I also didn't shade in color, rather using just a darker version of the main fur color of the cat, which aided in it not sticking out enough as shading. Ripple Claw is also where you can see how not streamlined my eye drawing process was at this point. I didn't use a lot of layers and didn't know what clipping masks were or how to use them, so my eyes bled together, the iris color popped out onto the fur around it, and the shading and lighting for the eye either didn't reach the edge of the iris or bled out onto the white of the eye, often both in the same drawing. Design-wise, tabbies always were, and to an extent, still are the bane of my existence, but since I've noticed that, I've been actively trying to pin down what I want to do with tabby stripes through more experimentation and research, and I hope to do a design for Ripplaw that will actually make me think of him when I look at him this time. Also, just putting the dark color at the base of the ear was a horrible idea. What was I thinking? As I work on that, I'll touch briefly on the future of the channel. Last Tuesday did bring us the fifth book of a starless clan, Wind, so the next video you see should be covering that book, in a couple of weeks once I've had time to record and edit it. After that, though, I have a pretty lengthy plan, including all of the video ideas through the end of June of 2025. So there's a lot of fun things coming. One thing coming up soon is the first episode of a new series that many of you donated comments for, which I am quite excited about. I had my patrons participate extensively in this one, and plan to continue with that in future episodes of the series. There will also, of course, be more Trip Through Time episodes, which always go in release order for the book, so it will never be a surprise what episode is coming next, and several more sunny spiels on various characters, topics, and some more fandom-directed ideas. It's all important stuff that I want to think more deeply about for a while. Also in the schedule for this... Uh, uh, over a year period, are some miscellaneous videos that will be trying out a few more experimental ideas on my end. They almost certainly won't become series, but I'm planning to include discussions around this channel and video creation as a subject, a video from the perspective of a certain canon character, and, eventually, a look into my writing process through the lens of a story I'm working on. But before I talk about that, let's do one more jump back to the drawings, because this is the big one. My drawing for the Into the Wild Trip Through Time episode was one of the first times I had really tried to create a full illustration, and definitely the first since I moved to my cell shading style. Because I tried to make all my videos ahead, I actually finished up this drawing on February 20th of 2021, so over three years ago now. You can see in the shading that I only had a cursory idea of where the shading should actually go, and I only really shaded the main four characters. The background either had one sweeping block of shading, like the faceless, line artless background cats, more soft shading, like on the grass and bushes that bleeds into each other, or the precisely no shading on the rocks. I color-coded my layers during this drawing, but I hadn't learned about layer folders yet, which made me far more wary about including too many elements in the scene. Well, that and the fact that this drawing took me even longer than it does now. 
When I draw a trip through time scene now, I go back to the scene and find any little details about which characters were there, what actions or expressions they each had, what details were present in the environment, and so on, so I can get as accurate a snapshot of that scene as possible. Which is one of the reasons that, for this re-illustrating, I am adding in more characters that we know to have been there. Which still isn't close to all of ThunderClan, but was more than I had given credit for. The other big thing is that, like with Rippleclaw, I am completely redoing Longtail's tabby stripes for his body, even though his were some of the better stripe patterns I did back then. And Lionheart's design, which I had done entirely on the spot for the original, is being replaced by my current and much more thought-out version of him. The shapes and colors on the original were just too garish for my taste. I'm also avoiding using random brushes to represent bushes and single, thin strokes for grass since it stands out far too much from what I did with the characters and rocks in the original. And there will also be no random faceless cats watching this time. The way I draw cats in general has changed quite a bit in ways you can probably notice as I draw, and I'm more willing to make cats smaller and really put them in the background as opposed to trying to keep them all roughly on the same plane, since that helps draw the eye to what is important. The other big thing which I'll have to add in the end is full scene lighting, which can also help to draw the eye in particular ways and give the scene an overall mood that endless and different bright saturated colors certainly did not. And while I work on that, I'd like to give a very brief explanation on that story I'm working on. During my writing of Paws of Stars, it was always my policy to keep as tight-lipped about my current writing process and future plot or character beats as possible, so that you could have that first read experience when you read it, including guessing at where the plot would go and being pleasantly surprised by anything you enjoyed. Viewing a certain piece of media after you have been spoiled on it shouldn't, and I hope in my case doesn't, ruin the experience. But I am someone who does value that first experience as much as I value the second, and I like giving people the chance to have both. This was especially true in Paws of Stars because it is intended to be a very canon-compliant fanfiction to a story that most readers are already quite familiar with. So the deviations from that template were ones I cared even more about keeping under wraps. This time, though, I'm more willing to let you in on some details, in time. Since I finished Paws of Stars six months ago and had some time to get more of a handle on other aspects of my life for a while, I had a desire to finally start up some writing again. This time, though, I wanted to focus on something that would allow me to practice world-building and structuring a plot, the areas I didn't have to worry about as much in Paws of Stars since the template of the original Warriors arcs gave a big starting jump to that anyway. I used Paws of Stars as a bit of training in how to write fiction at all, and I'd like to continue pushing myself with aspects of writing I haven't practiced much before. Because of this, what I'm writing now, or more accurately, what I'm in the pre-production stages for now, is a piece of original fiction that includes the sort of rich character arcs I love to write about, but also a unique world, magic system, and wider plot for me to play with in driving those arcs. Also, yes, the main characters will be animals, mostly cats and one dog, but the approach to them will be rather different than what Warriors has always gone for. I'll leave it there for now, but as I mentioned, I have a video planned further down the line to dive into exactly how I'm planning this story and what I have planned so far. I hope you enjoy it when it arrives. Finally, we are nearing the end of the final illustration, and I must say I've genuinely enjoyed this process. If it came across earlier as an indictment of my past work, or even if any of you took it as a criticism of your current skill level, no, that wasn't my intention at all. Every time we sit down to make a piece of art, we can look at our previous work and see areas to improve in, or look at other art and see techniques you'd like to apply into your own work. We choose one or more of those compounded ideas and try it out in our next piece. Over time, this process inevitably improves your art, getting it closer and closer to what you want for your personal style. It can be hard to look back on your personal art of any type because, with all of those improvements you've made, you'll have gotten used to looking at your art in a certain way, and many of the techniques you left behind will be on full display. But an exercise like this, where you redraw something you made long ago, can also help to show you just how many techniques you've developed since and cause you to feel happier with where you are now. Even looking at all of these new pieces I did today, I can still see areas I want to experiment more or improve next time. And that's great! It's what art is, all in all. In everything from my speaking voice, to my audio and video editing, to my visual art and script writing, looking back at my old content shows me that I really have grown, and that there is still plenty of growing to do from here on. Much like my approach to writing, or frankly, my approach to almost every area of my life, I do my best to see the places where I could improve without becoming demotivated to improve in the future. Unless you set one yourself, there isn't an end goal for improvement. It's a lifelong process for each and every skill you practice, from socializing to sculpting to teaching to quantum physics. 
Even still, with this railroad we all end up on, it's nice to sometimes pause on your rush forward to look back and appreciate just how far you've come already. And with every redraw complete, I will say, thank you for watching. And always remember that you're doing well. There's always more growing to do and more paths to pursue, but take a moment to look back at everything you've accomplished in this moment and let yourself, for a moment, feel proud of that. Oh.